Hello and welcome to this Corona for 3ds Max tutorial covering the UVW randomizer node. We'll be seeing how Corona's randomizer actually works and check out how it can be most useful in the texturing workflow. So let's say that we want to put this texture here onto this box. It doesn't seem like rocket science, but what happens here is when we feed the image into a bitmap node, it gets assigned a bunch of standard values which inform 3ds Max that the image fits exactly into one UV square, that it tiles in all directions, that rotation and offset are zero, and so on. All default values. Now that the image has information of how it fits into UV space, it can be matched up with geometry that also has information of how its faces fit into UV space, by being UV unwrapped or by using triplanar mapping. This is the cutting point where UVW randomization finds its purpose, by randomizing UV values of the bitmap before it reaches the geometry. Because a bitmap is essentially passed through two coordinate systems in order to reach a geometry, once by being assigned UV units in the bitmap, and then a second time when it reaches the XYZ units of the unwrapped geometry, there is room for some confusion. But to clear it up, we can create, say, a 500 by 500 plane, where our UV mapping is smaller than the geometry itself, say 100 by 100. Now we can catch a glimpse of how UV space operates. If we turn off tiling in the bitmap, the image only shows in the center, as it is no longer being copied to infinity on both axes. Now the image only lives in the native UV square. If we change the tiling, for example, to 0.5 for U and V, we can see that the image grows larger than our 100 by 100 UV space, because we're telling the bitmap that it fits only half into one UV unit. If we change the tiling to 2, the image fits twice into one UV unit, becoming smaller the higher we set the value. So, if you want the bitmap to fill the 500cm plane, then we set the tiling to 0.2, because our UV map modifier is still set to project one UV unit onto 100cm. These numbers are becoming unnecessarily obtuse because one of our translation factors is wrong. Thus, if we set the UV map modifier to fit the geometry exactly by also measuring 500cm, then our bitmap can be set to the default 1 and 1 for U and V tiling. We can also see that when we change the offset, we're shifting the bitmap out of its original position. It's important to note that when we turn tiling back on and adjust the offset, we're shifting the image until a copy or tile of the original becomes visible. This means that if we offset to any full number, it looks like there's no offset at all. So what all of this goes to show is that if we want to avoid using confusing values, it's a good idea to leave the coordinate settings in the bitmap at their default and ensure that the UV mapping also fits well. To explore the UV randomizer settings in their most basic form, we have a scene here where we see a grid of planes, all UV mapped to fit one bitmap per plane. Our material is set up such that the bitmap stays red if we're seeing the original bitmap and becomes colored when we see a copy or a tile of it. This will help us interpret the results of the randomizer more clearly. Because the planes are created using the I2 clone modifier, where each cloned object is a separate mesh element, the UV randomizer is set to mesh element mode. For a more detailed look on the distribution modes, please see our Corona multimap tutorial. The UV randomizer manipulates the same basic settings as in the bitmap itself, being able to offset, rotate and scale the bitmap on every instance, mesh element or whatever distribution mode the randomizer is set to. The values chosen depend heavily on the situation, so understanding the values helps. The from and to columns set the range that the randomizer operates within, where the step sets the specific distance that the randomized values have to adhere to. This can make it a bit tricky. To see it all in action, we need to start the interactive render because corona nodes like the randomizer, multimap or the triplanar map don't preview accurately in the viewport. Manipulating the offset moves our bitmap over in either direction, and we can see that as soon as a tile of the original becomes visible, it's colored differently by a node setup. We can start with a U offset from 0 to 1, and now start playing with a step. If we set the step to 1, we can see that the bitmap is either being offset by 1, or not at all, because our step is limiting the results to 0 and 1. If we set the step to 0.5, we can see that the bitmap is either being offset to 0.5, to 1, or left at 0, because the step size is limiting the offsets to those three results. Rotation values work in degrees, meaning if we want to rotate the texture randomly in any direction, the rotation should be set with 360 degrees difference between from and to. The scale values work differently to how they would in the bitmap, being based here on percentages. Again, the pitfall here is that we're not scaling the bitmap, but the UV space, meaning that when decreasing the value, the image will appear bigger, as the UV space it occupies is being scaled down. 
The checkbox labeled same as you becomes useful when randomizing the scale of a texture where you want to prevent stretching the aspect ratio, because it will ensure that the texture is always scaled equally for U and V. If we want to flip the bitmap to add more randomization possibilities, we can set the U and V scale from minus 100 to 100 with a step of 200. Be careful not to enable the same as you checkbox when doing horizontal or vertical flipping, because otherwise the bitmap will always be flipped on both axes on each instance, resulting not in a flip on one axis or the other, but what is essentially a 180 degree rotation. So, let's take a look at some real world examples. The simplest use case for the UV randomizer is a single seamless bitmap. This is the case in this kitchen scene, where we want to add smudges and fingerprints to these bowls. To check how the smudges would be mapped onto the geometry, we can plug the bitmap into the diffuse channel for now and turn up the contrast. We can see that because the bowls are instanced and all have the same UV mapping, the smudges would repeat. So that's where we need to start randomizing. As our bitmap is seamless and its orientation on the geometry doesn't really matter, setting up the UV randomizer is very straightforward in this case, with no need to worry about step sizes and so on. As the bowls are separate objects, we begin by setting the randomizer to instance mode, with U and V set from 0 to 1, which will randomly offset the bitmap in either axis by one UV unit. The temptation is always to set the from and to values to some big number with hopes of achieving something that is more random, like from minus 300 to 300, or something unreasonably large. Because the bitmap itself is set to U and V tiling 1, setting from and to with a difference larger than 1 will offset the bitmap so far as to only show further copies of itself. This means that the results wouldn't be more random with a larger number, just differently random. Looking at the rotation, it can be set from 0 to 360, because the texture can be oriented in any direction, while the scale can be set from minus 100 to 100, with a step of 200, to flip the bitmap randomly in either axis. With the bitmap appearing to be randomized properly, we can plug it into the reflection glossiness and let it render. Another use case in the same kitchen scene may be the cabinet doors, which could look a lot better with a wood veneer. While the texture we have in this case is also seamless, the task is just a bit more challenging because the texture has a grain direction that we have to respect, and comes with multiple channels, that all need to be randomized identically. A practical way to deal with randomizing multiple bitmaps is to link the parameters of the UV randomizers for each channel. To set this up, we need to right-click a UV randomizer node and hit Show All Parameters. Now we can link all the parameters to separate linear float nodes and then copy the randomizer node by clicking and dragging while holding shift. The result is that if we change the value in one randomizer, it follows in all other linked randomizers. When we have as many copies of the UV randomizer as there are bitmaps for this material, we can select all of them and hide the additional parameters again, just to neaten things up. Just as a note though, copying the randomizer with additional parameters hidden will not create a linked copy. Also, if you don't want to do this each time, save a randomizer node in your material library where the additional parameters are already linked to linear float nodes. Looking at the cabinet doors again, they are cloned within one object, so we need to set the mode to mesh element and not to instance. The geometry is already mapped with the correct scale for this wood, so our offset can be set again from 0 to 1. As the texture is seamless, the step can be left at 0, as any results between 0 and 1 offset will look correct. If you do find the two randomizations look too similar, you can try changing to a new random seed, or you could set a step size that'll ensure that no two repeats can be closer than that minimum, so maybe a step of 0.1 or 0.2 to exclude very small results. The rotation is a bit more tricky because our texture has a grain, so to keep it from rotating in any direction we can set the rotation from 0 to 180 with a step of 180, which means that the texture will either be rotated 180 degrees or not at all. You may be wondering why not set the rotation from 0 to 360 with a step of 180. That would set results from 0, 180 and 360, where 0 and 360 would look the same because the texture is being rotated full circle. This means that only a third of the doors would get the 180 turn bitmap, which in this case is wrong, as we want half to be rotated and half to remain at 0. To also flip the texture in both axes, we can set the scale again from minus 100 to 100 with a step of 200. If we render a couple of shots from the scene, everything looks to have worked out.
UV randomizer becomes more complex when dealing with non-seamless textures, like this pine set from Arroway. It includes three equally sized planks that we can map onto this floor geometry built with the floor generator plugin. As we want the UV randomizer to pick areas that don't show visible seams, we need to randomize with more care, so we've created an overlay image for this texture that shows a different color for each plank, and another image that highlights the left edge, middle and right edge of the texture. This helps us see how the randomizer has shifted the image, because we need to make sure that it only shifts left and right on each plank, without showing an edge. The material is also set up to show the edges of the geometry in black by overlaying a wire node into the diffuse to help us see the individual planks. If we now plug the image highlighting the edges of our texture into the diffuse, we can see that each generated box is showing the entire bitmap, with the same happening when we insert the image highlighting the planks. This means that we want to crop down to one plank at a time, so we need to scale the bitmap to only fit a third into one UV space which means setting U and V scale to 33%. Okay, good. Now that the scale is set up, we can start offsetting. To begin, we can limit results to either be in the plank 1, 2 or 3 area, which means we need to look at the up and down or V offset settings. Because our UV scale is scaling up the bitmap to 3 times its size, we need to shift the image not in the usual 1 UV unit, but 3. So we can start by setting the offset from 0 to 2 with a step of 1, limiting results to either be 0, 1 and 2. It looks like each box is getting one of the plank colors without overlaps, so it seems to be working. Now we want the U offset to slide around each plank without hitting the outer boundaries. If we switch to the image highlighting the edges, the randomizer is showing the middle of each plank, which means we want to offset to the left and to the right. That means we can start by setting a U offset from minus 1 to 1, with a step of 1, which shifts the bitmap to either be on the left, or on the right, or leaves it in the middle. We don't want to restrict the movement of the bitmap too much though, so we can set the step size to be something small, or leave it at 0 altogether to allow complete freedom along the U axis. If we, as a test, for example, exceed the minus 1 to 1 range of the u-axis, we can see that seams are becoming visible, so the offset from minus 1 to 1 is working as it should. With all the complicated stuff out of the way, we can add more random results by allowing the planks to be rotated from 0 to 180 with a step of 180, and by allowing horizontal and vertical mirroring to occur by extending the u and v scale from minus 33 to 33 with a step of 66 again disabling the same as you checkbox to allow for independent mirroring on both axes. If we now swap out our original diffuse map and connect all the other channels, the material seems to be working as expected. Just as a final interesting use case, we can look at some leaves on a tree, where we can use the UV randomizer to randomly scale down leaves to simulate different ages. We can start by dragging UV randomizer with the already exposed parameters from earlier. Now we can link up the diffuse and opacity channels of our leaf, both receiving the same randomization values. Before we set up the randomizer, we need to check that our bitmaps are set to default values, and also disable tiling in our opacity map, otherwise when we scale leaves down, copies of the originals will become visible. After checking that the randomizer is set to mesh element, as the leaves are all part of one object, we can play around with the scale. If we set the scale below 100, the bitmap is growing larger than the actual leaf geometry, which isn't what we want. So we are looking at results from 100 upwards. It looks like scale 300 is the smallest the leaves should be, so maybe we want something between 100 and 300 scale, or maybe if we want to simulate spring where all leaves are smaller, we can set the scale from 200 to 400, making all of the leaves between half and a quarter of their former size. Setting up the UV randomizer seems daunting at first, but we hope that we could shed some light on the guiding principles that rule UV space. For more information, please see the Corona help desk. You can find a link in the description below this video.